have agreed, with which we have agreed. And you think you have to want more than you need. Until you have it all, you won't be free. Society, you're a crazy breed. I hope you're not lonely. Without me, when you want more than you have, you think you need, and when you think more than you want, your thoughts begin to bleed. I think I need to find a bigger place, 'cause when you have more than you think, you need more space. Society, you're a crazy breed. I hope you're not lonely without me. Society, crazy and deep. I hope you're not lonely without me. Less is more, but if less is more, how you keep in score? It means for every point you make, your level drops. Kinda like you're starting from the top, and you can't do that. Society, you're a crazy breed. I hope you're not lonely without me. Society, crazy and deep. I hope you're not lonely without me. Society, have mercy on me. I hope you're not angry if I disagree. Society, crazy and deep. I hope you're not lonely without me. Difference when you're <laughs> when you're oh, getting uh, up in age as opposed to being in your 20 something in your best fit, fit shape of your life, fitness shape of your life. Anyway, uh, today's uh, uh, video, yeah, Bigfoot is going to be like a byproduct of my hikes. Sometimes it always is. I just do something else and they want to interact. So, but uh, today's special video. 25 years ago, uh, August uh, 18th, pre precise, but uh, 25 years ago from this August, uh, 2017, Chris McCandless uh, starved to death in uh, Alaska. He got dropped off uh, by a Gillis guy uh, on Stampede Road, Stampede Trail. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about that as I hike in. 
I seen on uh, on a Topo uh, Google Topo or whatever map uh, Google map uh, there's an abandoned bus on this road somewhere so let's go find that and we'll talk more about uh, canvas and uh, what it was like to be a hiker back then in uh, 90 91 92 when I was out west so let's go do that and this also looks like a good area for bigfooting too okay so I made it past the quarry I always like to fire up my camera when I come into a new area it's not sparse uh, trees I guess there's lots of trees but um, the other reason I chose this area because because it's got like sparse trees and the trees are young or small kind of like uh, 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 tundra a little bit like uh, uh, Christopher McCandless must uh, McCandless uh, ran into and I just stepped on a skull uh, I don't know what that would be the teeth looks like maybe, maybe a deer a small deer Was filming. So this is a good area for bears. Probably raspberries are in uh, are growing now, and then blueberries. So uh, we're hiking down the trail. Lose the trail. Candace had to cross uh, beaver ponds and stuff like that. Where the hunters, they blow them up and drain them, and then they, then they cross. Anyway, all right. Let's plow on here. But yeah, uh, Alexander Supertramp. That was his, uh, his anonymous name. When he didn't want people to know who he was, so they'd call his parents or something. But, uh, while I was hiking, and uh, my story, how my story, many people's stories relate to him, is that um, uh, he went through, he hiked the Pacific Coast Trail, he was in Dakotas, Montana, just like me, I did those things, through Washington State, um, Washington State, and then, uh, like after he's done like a year and a half of trekking around the the Western um, American states down in New Mexico, Colorado, and all that canoeing. And um, with that said, he had experience a year and a half experience of survival. Uh, but what got him was, yeah, I guess he forgot he had lots of help. He had lots of rides, lots of people offering him buy meals. You know what I mean? He got a couple jobs here and there to top up his cash for for funds for his next trip. So he forgot that when he went up to Alaska. Alaska, like, pff, I don't know, they care, but they don't care, you know. It's just, uh, you know, it kind of always bugged me how that guy dropped him off on Stampede Trail. Gillies or whatever his name is. Galand. And he never told the rangers. He drove right by a, a ranger or a police station. They said, I just dropped this young kid off going down that trail and he's not well equipped so uh i don't care if he doesn't like my comment or whatever i mean the kid hiked in there not understanding alaska other than just the great adventure and um got a hold of some uh bad plants so he's trying to live off the land and it messed up his digestion and he ended up starving to death uh, but the one cool thing about uh, he got a he got a <laughs> hitchhiking ticket uh, outside of Willow Creek, uh, Bigfoot capital sort of thing near near Eureka. So anyway, uh, there's the bus. That's pretty awesome.
So McCandless crosses uh, the Tikanaki River, something like that, when it was low. And, uh, hold on. So McCandless comes across this abandoned bus, and uh, I probably screwed up the pronunciation of the first river, which he was only able to cross because he got there in late, late winter. And, um, uh, he got there in late winter, waded across it, hiked a few miles up, found the bus, he called Magic Bus, but I think now people call it, I could, people could call it Bus of Death. Um, and I'll get into more about that. Anyway, let's scout around this bus. Okay, so it's the same kind of deal. Hunters are using this bus. And otherwise, it's abandoned. We'll see here. Okay, so let's just have a quick look inside. If the door is open easy enough. Uh, they got it like wedged here. And uh, there we go. So the canvas made his refuge. That's my monopod thing falling down, and a bus, and he died on the bunk. Pretty awesome. Not the first person, I guess, not the first group to use a bus as a rough shelter for hunting. Okay, the thing with McCandless is, uh, I mean, the guy, in a, the guy was experienced for what he knew. Um, he just should have studied more about Alaska, I guess, besides just reading books by authors who uh, take one cozy trip, camping trip there, and then they write this big yarn about uh, living in the wild, and then you get all these uh, dreamers. Which, that's what he was. I mean, he's an East Coast kid, like me. Like, eastern part of the North America. And uh, people in, in the Rockies and live on the West Coast, it's no big deal to them, but the mountains and stuff. All the people out there hiking, you run into, they're mostly from everywhere else. <laughs> and that's the thing, too, about McCandless. I mean, there's lots of people like Christopher McCandless, who uh, used the uh, Alexander Super Tramp. Um, you hike the, the Pacific Coast Trail, Crest Trail, and you'll run into, you know, even one day, or you'll pass a, a dozen of those guys, or whatever number, in like one day, and um, he, he wasn't suicidal, he, he was just, he wanted a challenge, I mean, the guy breezed through school, his family had m money, they were comfortable, and um, the reason he pushed himself and went so far away from his family is because I think he was, he was trying to... Um, deal with and cure himself from the um, neglectful kind of uh, family that he was raised in. Um, I don't want to say the, the abuse, physical abuse or anything like that, but I mean there's there's mentions of that in, in uh, his sister's books and movies, Into the Wild and Back to the Wild and uh, her, her last book. Um, uh, but anyway, and I'll put that in the, the links below, but anyway, he's a guy that, like, you know, like me, like many others, and I, I can only talk about myself, but I'll put some pictures in you've already seen, is that, you know, he was looking for the big adventure of his life, you can only do that when you're young, you can't, you know, go off on these big adventures when you're, you're 30 something, and you have little kids, and you got to start paying rent or mortgage, and you can't do that then, you got to do it when soon as you finish school or right before you go to college or one in that time frame and uh when people you know a lot of people live in alaska you know he was ill prepared greenhorn uh suicidal no 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 no. i mean it may seem that way because those people are from the area and they know how rugged it is but um he, he just wanted to push himself and, and in a way cure himself from um what he what he had to live through so uh that's why I kept getting what they say itchy feet or whatever, because 
you know, after a while, his uh, past, his demons would catch up to him, and he'd need another adventure. And um, he wanted to do this Alaskan adventure because it was the last wild spot, sort of speak, in North America. Well, Canada, you can go anywhere, Yukon and stuff like that. But obviously, he wanted to be in Alaska, so, uh, being an American. But that's fine. Um, but anyway, yeah, he, he crossed the border and the BC border, um, and then he made his way up through certain towns like Lake Louise, and uh, he was in Jasper, could have been there the same time I was, could have passed him on the street, could have met him in the photo booth area or maybe near the hostel, you know, where all the young guys go for a free bowl of soup and a, a place to sleep for the night. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's lots of us at, at that age. There's lots still today, but things have changed now. There's a lot more rules, a lot more restrictions. Um, but so he made his way to uh, Alaska, um, Laird, uh, Hot Springs in Yukon, and then got a ride by a guy selling a motorhome or something, bring, delivering a motorhome all the way up to Fairbanks. Hung around there, read up on the... Uh, the um, flora, what you could eat, and how you could survive, but um, he only bought, I don't know if he, was, he wasn't broke, I mean, uh, yeah, he burned his money and all that and his adventures, but this other guy afterwards found a backpack and had his wallet in it and had like 300 bucks, but he wanted to, uh, you know, he made a statement burning the money and all that, and it's almost like he was doing this to make a film about himself, but... I mean, um, you have to have something interesting to, to make a, f a video about, so, I mean, they, they take a lot of risks. I, I, I almost got killed a few times out west. Avalanche, Grizzly, um, got charged at by a buffalo going through Montana. They're mean, by the way. And, um, and some other stuff, too. I mean, you know, uh, I crested a hill, and there's a herd of uh, bighorn sheep there, and they could have rammed me right off the, the hillside. But with that said, um, he had an idea of what he was doing. He was in shape, but he wasn't fattened up enough, I think, for Alaska. You have to go in with some pounds on to survive the lean summer or whatever. He was already scrawny when he got there. And then he started eating, and then he ate those um, Indian potato seeds. And um, The thing is, it's either the seed or they were covered in, in um, mold. And he got sick from it. And he couldn't digest the food. He couldn't get any energy from the food he was eating. Um, growing weaker, keeping a diary of all that. And he tried to get out. Yeah, I did my hundred days, and he tried to hike out. And the river that he crossed, that was three or two or three feet deep, was now twelve feet deep and a raging white cap river. So he didn't expect that. I mean, you know, melt off. If you live out there, you do. You know, you understand that. And um, but it was it was now or never kind of thing when he got dropped off on Stampede Road. And um, I guess he must have picked that road because of how it wormed into a certain area just uh, on the border of Denali Park, uh, Mount McKinley, Mount McKinley or Denali Mountain. Um, I'm not correct. Anyway, so he uh, made his lodge at an abandoned bus that hunters use, like this one here. This one's got no name, <laughs> no number, no number. Um, and he survived for 100 days and then tried to get out and he couldn't. And then, um, I don't know, he threw away his map now. Yeah, I understand why the theory of that, but I mean, um, maybe you put your map in with the money that he had in the battle bottom of his backpack. And, you know, when you start getting to the point where, you know, I only have enough energy for like another week before things get really bad, that's when you pull the map out. I mean, if he would have, if he would have looked at the map when he got into that dire strait, there was a cable crossing, you know, you get in a little, like a, a little closed in cage thing and you go across the hand over hand across the river. And then there was other uh, lodges and cabins in the area, which they, a couple of the guys came forward and said that someone tried to break into their cabin. Well, it might not have been him, but um, 
because by the time he probably discovered him, he's probably pretty weak anyway. But um, could have been anybody, you know, hunters or whatever. Um, but pretty cool uh, abandoned, not an abandoned bus, but a bus used for hunters here. And um, I just want to relay that, you know, yeah, the guy wasn't suicidal. He wasn't crazy. He just wanted to test himself. And he proved he could in the southern states, southern, southwestern states, you know, canoeing all the way down the Colorado into Mexico and getting back across the border and surviving in Arizona along the desert and all that. So, um, but as I said in a little earlier clip, that he had help though. He had rides, people fed him. He got the occasional job to get food and to top up, um, as you read in the book. As you read in uh, the book by uh, Krakow, uh, I guess his name, John, John Krak Krakow, Krakner, Cowher, yeah, I guess. Anyway, um, good book. Uh, I guess it's um, uh, required reading in some schools. And I hope it's for the right reason, eh? Like, you know, yeah, it's great to have dreams and stuff, but you can't just go, um, <laughs> bug on my lens. Hike, hiking into the wild and be unprepared, and uh, thus your luck will run out, you know. Okay, let's uh, do some footing. I built an ivory tower so I could worship from above When I climbed down to be set free She took me in again There's a bee, a big hot sun Beating on the big people in a big hot world When she comes to greet me Mercy at my feet yeah. When I see a pin of charm She just throws it back at me Once I dug an early grave To find a better land She just smiled and laughed at me And took her bruise back again So I tried to warn her, 
I turn to see her weave for 